Algebra 2, Unit 7, Lesson 3, Finding Zeros by Dividing. In this lesson, we want to find factors and zeros through long division and what's called synthetic division, and then use a theorem known as the remainder theorem to interpret the results of a synthetic division and solve all polynomial equations that we have by factoring. First of all, we already know that when we divide polynomials and we take one polynomial and divide by something, we get a quotient polynomial, and then we can put the remainder polynomial over the divisor. If we multiply both sides by the divisor, we'll also see that we can write that as it will cancel here, but we'll get the quotient times the divisor, and then we'd add the remainder polynomial to that. If the remainder polynomial is zero, that means that the divisor d of x is a factor and that the quotient is also the other factor. The other easier way when we have a linear factor is to use synthetic division for that linear factor. If we have something that's not linear, we must use long division. So we're going to look for the linear factor and we're actually going to divide by the related zero to it. So we would take the one with the opposite sign. We're then going to write the coefficients of the polynomial in standard form. If, uh, if the cubic term was zero, we would put a zero for that. So whatever terms are missing, you must put a zero for the missing coefficient. We're going to bring the first coefficient down to the bottom. Then we're going to multiply by the one we're dividing by. We're going to write that under the next coefficient, add those, and then multiply again, write that under the next one and add, multiply, write it under the next one and add until we've reached the end of the row. The linear factor, as I said, is a, is a factor of the polynomial only if the remainder is zero. And the remainder theorem goes further than that. It says if you take b and you divide and you have this remainder, that this remainder is actually the value of the polynomial at that thing, so that this is actually p of b. So if I put p into b into my polynomial function p, that that remainder is the value we'd get from that. So why is that? If we were to take in factor, we know that we can take p of x is equal to our factor x minus b, and then with our quotient adding the remainder. If we substitute b in here now, p of b, this part will go away, and we would simply get the remainder from dividing by b. So now let's look at how that works for a particular polynomial and the divisor, and we'll look at all the information we can get from that x minus 1, the 0 of that is 1, so that will be the number here. We're going to take the coefficients 1, 3, minus 1, and minus 3, and write those on the top. You bring the first number down as 1, you multiply these two, which is 1, write that over here, and add, giving you 4. You multiply those, put the 4, add, gives you 3, multiply the 1 and the 3, write that there, add them, you get 0. Because this is a 0, that means x minus 1 is a factor of this polynomial. It also means that if I put 1 into this function, I will get 0 as the answer. x equals 1 solves this polynomial being set equal to 0, and we can also get a factoring of the polynomial. We know that x minus 1 is a factor, and then the other factor comes from the bottom here. This was cubic, so this would be squared, so this is x squared plus 4x plus 3, that's our other factor, and in fact, this particular one, we can factor even further into x plus 1 times x plus 3. As another example, we have a polynomial that we want to divide by x plus 2. The related 0 to that is minus 2, which we'll put into our little box there. The coefficients, it has cubed and squared, has no x term, we'll put a 0 for that one. So we have 1, minus 2, 0, and 3, which are our top row. We bring down the 1, 1 times minus 2 is minus 2, adding those is minus 4, multiplying those is 8, adding those is 8, multiplying minus 16, adding minus 13. Because this is not a 0, that means x plus 2 is not a factor. It does, however, mean that if we put minus 2 into this polynomial and evaluate it, so minus 2 cubed minus 2 times a minus 2 squared plus 3, the answer for that will be minus 13. x plus 2 is not a factor, so minus 2 is not a 0. We can still write it as something factored, but then we have to add the remainder to it, so it's not a, it's not a true factorization because there is a remainder added at the end. But it would be x plus 2. This will now give us x squared minus 4x plus 8 as our second part 
but then we have to put our remainder added at the end. As a third example, let's suppose we have something where we do not have a 1 in the front, then the zero for that is minus 5 halves, so this the opposite of this number divided by this number, so minus 5 halves. Then we have 2, minus 7, minus 44, and minus 35 are our top row. We bring down the 2, you multiply minus 5 halves times 2 is a minus 5, adding that with minus 7 gives a minus 12, multiplying those is 30, adding is minus 14, multiplying those is positive 35, adding to that negative 35 is a 0, meaning this is a 0 or this is a factor of it. But because we, we have to be careful because we really use the minus 5 halves and we effectively factored out that 2. So when we give our solutions, we have to be careful. This p of minus 5 halves is 0. x plus 5 halves is a factor. This will also be a factor. If we put x minus 5 halves in here, we will get 0. The factorization is where we have to be careful. We really used x minus a minus 5 halves or x plus 5 halves as our factor, not the one we started with. So we have a 2 here inside of that. So we have a 2x squared minus 12x minus 14. I'm going to factor out that 2 to get x squared minus 6x minus 7. That 2 combined with that will give us that original factor we started with, 2x plus 5. So if there were 3 here, we would be able to factor a 3 out of the bottom row. If there were 4 there, we would be able to factor out a 4 and so on. And you would use that to combine with your root to give it in the factored form using the factor that you were given. And then this particular one actually factors further, even though I didn't do it here. That's the quantity x minus 7 times the quantity x plus 1 to factor that even further.